So before we start talking about uh, your fight on April 22nd, as this is the first time I've spoken to you, I wanted to go back to kind of where your UFC career started. Because I remember watching that season of The Ultimate Fighter and, you know, like I remember thinking, okay, you're you're kind of one of the more inexperienced guys in, in the series. But I don't think I realized quite how young you were at the time. Like, how was it competing in, in tough as not only the youngest guy on that series, but I would imagine, if not the youngest guy ever to be on Tough, must be one of. Yeah, I think so. If I would, if I won, if I beat Ricky, I think I would have been the second youngest ever win because Kevin Gastelum was officially twenty one, and I turned twenty two on the show. So I celebrated my birthday in the house. So he was like, he beat me by a couple months or something like that, but. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. I tell everyone this all the time. Like, I had never been away from my family for longer than, like, four weeks for, like, a summer camp or some, you know, some shit like that. And so when I went down to Tuff, I was there for two two months. And not only was I not even with anyone that I knew, I was, like, cut off from society. No phone, you know, no letters, nothing like that. The most I got was that video call after my first fight with Josh. And so other than that, I didn't have any communication with my friends or family. So it was a trip. It was like, it was almost like a growing up experience, you know, kind of like a, a journey I took on my own. So it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I bet. Like how, um, how early or, or how long before you were actually on the show, did you find out that you were going to be doing it? You know, they actually, I, I wasn't like, it wasn't for sure anything, but they had sent the applications out all the way back in like December or some something like that. And so I was expecting to go on in January because we were in COVID and everything. They pushed it back to April. And so I had been like getting ready for this for like six months. You know, obviously I didn't know for sure I was going to be on, but I assumed I would have been a good candidate because um, the gym I came from and, you know, my age and stuff like that. But, you know, you never know. So I was just grinding for like six months trying to get ready for the show. Yeah, I was going to mention, uh, I remember this being a huge part of kind of the, the video packages that they did around you, obviously coming from the gym with with Mike and Juliana Pena, like both competed on tough. Like it, even though you came in with, uh, I, I, I believe, the least experience of anyone on the show. I don't know for a yeah. fact, but I would assume so, right? Um, you ha having Michael Chiesa and Juliana Pena as kind of your mentors in the gym uh, and kind of helping you through that process. How much benefit was it having those people there who can kind of prepare you for, for what you're going into? Because there isn't, there still isn't really anything like tough in MMA. No. Yeah. And it was huge, honestly, because obviously on top of like asking them questions on like how the show goes all like, you know, like what, what to expect, what not to expect and all that stuff. It was also huge just, like, hearing their mindsets of what they thought about going through the show, especially Julianne Pena. She's got, like, the strongest mental I've ever met. And so just t hearing what she did when she was going through the show was huge. Um, and then talking to Mike as well because he had the longest season of Tough. Um, and so – sorry, one second. We good? No yeah, he, had the, he was on the longest season of Tough, so he was there twice as long as I was. So just hearing some of his stories was nuts. And, uh, you know, the last thing was, it's just, they came from when the gym was like, had no notoriety. Like I came from the gym when it already had a Mike Yes and Juliana Pena. Mm -hmm. They came from when there was nothing. So when they went on the show, they were going against these top level gyms and these big like Team Alpha Male and ATT and all these gyms, you know, coming from a small town of Spokane with no notoriety. Um, just knowing that they could do it and they could uh, make it through, knowing it just gave me confidence that I could as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, the the last thing I want to talk to you about with with tough is uh, if I was gonna pick one UFC fighter that I think would be a fantastic coach on tough, it would be Alex Volkanovski. Like, for sure, it seems tailor made for it from from the outside looking in. Obviously, we don't we get a little bit of a glimpse of kind of what the training sessions and things like that are, are kind of like, but only only a small bit in reality to what you guys have. What was it like to train under him and his team? Yeah, it was life changing for sure. Like I, whenever people ask me what the most I got out of tough was, it was training with Volk and his team. 
you know, the way that they are such a championship team, like the way that they all work together, they're like all best buds. They all give each other shit. They all have fun together, but they all like work and uh, are there to help you. Like Volk would do like a two hour training session for by himself because he was getting ready for Ortega. And then he would train with us for two hours. And he wasn't just sitting on the sidelines telling us what to do. He was out there training with us, sparring with us, doing all that stuff. And that was like his whole team. So taking that back and trying to create a team like that for myself was the biggest thing I learned from Tough. Mm. I I can't even imagine how much that experience has helped going forward. And it seemed like the, the Tough kind of process was invaluable for you for the the first actual fight in the in the ufc obviously apart from the the ricky fight because i know that kind of counts as well right but um yeah i've watched the fight with garcia back yesterday and in my mind i'd completely forgotten about the start of the first round so i just remember it being like quite a grinding fight and, and your grappling it is very very good and that was kind of the story. And then I watched it back and it was like watching it live for the first time again, where I was like, my jaw hit the floor, like right at the start. So battling back from that adversity, how how much do you put that down to to experience and having those mentors around you like Chiesa, Juliana Pena, obviously training with Volk? You know, I always tell people, whenever people ask me about the fight, I always tell them, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but that's one of the things is my mental is like, no matter what, you got to kill me if you're going to get me out of that cage. I'm never going to quit. I'm never going to stop. You're going to have to literally knock me out, choke me out, break a limb, something. I'm not going to stop coming forward just because I get hit hard. So since that shot didn't knock me out, I was still in that fight and I was just ready to keep coming forward. And like you said, I feel like my grappling is just a different level. That's what our gym's known for. That's what we're good at. It's, but it's just we're grinders. And I think they go hand in hand. Like, you're never going to stop me from, if you knock me down, I'm going to grab a leg. If you shoot on me and almost give me a submission, I'm going to get out and I'm going to punch you in the face. So no matter what, I'm going to keep coming forward and you're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah, I, I'm sure that at some point soon we will get to a point in your career where you're facing someone in the UFC where they have less experience than you do. But obviously for this next fight, April 22nd against Baccarel, he's got six fights in the UFC, so way more. But again, when I look at the fact that you've had Pena and Chiesa right there with you this whole time, the tough experience training with Volk, that adversity in the last fight that you had to, to battle through and I'm sure you learned a lot in that fight. It feels like you have more experience than your record suggests. Like, I know that this guy has a lot more UFC experience than you, but in terms of fight experience, it still feels like you're up there to me. Does it feel that way to you? Do you feel like you've come a long way in the last like year or so in that regard? For sure. Yeah, I feel like I, I got a lot of experiences. And I just lived the lifestyle of a UFC fighter. I'm always training going to Vegas, going to Chicago, always training no matter what. Even on my off camps, I'm training like I'm in a camp. I'm always surrounded by it. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I do have enough experience to beat these guys. And then also, it's not the first time I've gone against a guy with a, a deep record. You know, I feel like I've been the underdog for every one of my fights except for the pretty fight, which I was surprised about. You know, the first fight in the house, I fought Josh Rattenhouse, who was my teammate, super good guy. But we're both from Spokane. And he was 10 years older than me, had three times as many fights, and he had went to decision with a guy like Marlon Marias and fought in Russia and stuff. And so going in that fight, everyone in the house was like, oh, Brady's about to lose. Damn, that sucks. You know, Josh is about to win. And I won that fight. Going on to the Vince fight, he's from uh, American Top or uh, Team Alpha Male, the mm -hmm. best uh, team for 135ers, you know, 145ers in the UFC. And they're like, oh, Brady's about to get knocked out. He Vince just had a knockout. Brady just had a war. Brady's about to lose. I go out there and win. Then I go against Ricky, who has double my record, same as Dana, 10 and 2. And I was uh I was uh five and one at the time. And so going in that fight, they're like, oh, he's from Team Alpha Male. Ricky's gonna starch him, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I went to a split decision, which I think well, I won. So just going, you know, going into this fight, I'll probably be the underdog, which I'm used to. And it's just going against a guy with more experience, but that doesn't matter. He's 10 years old than me again, twice my record, but I'm ready to go. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I, I'm i not going to mention it because I've heard you talk about it in uh, 
in previous interviews, but I just wanted to to end this by saying I hope that we get to see that Ricky rematch at some point down the line. Maybe when you guys are, are further in on your careers, bit higher up the rankings, things like that. But I think that that would be a, a no brainer to run back at some point. I'd love to see that. Just as a as a fan of that series, I think that would be cool to get another chapter of that. You know, for sure. I'm 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 all in for exciting fights and. uh you know, like they compared our fight to Stefan Bonner and fucking Forrest Griffin's finale fight. So that was an honor in itself. I'm ready to run that back. And honestly, I feel like my my levels are just gonna be so much higher. So I'm excited to go and uh rewrite that history. For sure, man. Uh thank you so much for your time, mate. Uh all the best for April twenty second. And I I keep forgetting that here in the UK it's afternoon, but it's really early for you. So enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, and yeah, I'll hopefully catch up with you at some point in the future, mate. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you later. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, mate.